pretty, Mother? Oh, pretty color. <laughs> well, now, Mrs. Uh, Wilson? Wilson. Let me see. Uh, there's a pink cottage. It's uh, already took. We promised the pink to the Eldridge family. They're driving in on Sunday. And the brown cottage. That's took. And the purple... Uh, Jim Hanley and his wife had the purple cottage for another week. Your husband ain't with you. No. Just the two of us. I'm a widow. Well, now, I reckon we could give you the blue cottage for two weeks. Or, or did you put up the new curtains? Hung them yesterday. Did you fix that leaky faucet in the kitchen? By gum, I knew there was something I forgot. But, uh, but now I got to, uh, I got to mail the sword and, uh, Willie. Uh, yes, Grandpa? Go ask Davy Jones if he's got time to fix the kitchen facet in the blue cottage. What else has he got but time? All right, Grandpa, I'll ask him. <laughs> to my way of thinking, the blue cottage has got the best view of all. You like it there. I'm sure we will. Oh, um, our luggage is at the station. I wonder if it could be sent directly to the cottage. As soon as Davy fixes your facet, I'll have him fetch it for you. Thank you. Oh, you know Davy Jones won't go near that railroad depot no matter what. That's right. I plumb forgot. Well, I'll get to it myself as soon as I finish up here. Davy Jones is our beachcomber. Seems an appropriate name for one who beats comb. That man sure is a puzzle to all of us. Nobody can figure out why, but for some reason or other, he's scared to death of trains. Now, was that the blue cottage you said? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you two just move on in. Thank you. <laughs> Grandpa wants to know, can you fix the facet in the kitchen at the Blue Cottage? Hmm? Well, if you got the time. Time? Oh, I don't know, Willie. I'm a pretty busy man. See, I had planned to spend the day just thinking. But maybe I could squeeze the job in to fit my schedule. Want to watch the store for me while I'm gone? Sure. You stay here, Neptune. What's the matter, Davy? You sick or something? No, I'm all right. Jones. Come to fix the kitchen faucet. What's your name? Penny Wilson. Penny? Say, that's a nice name. It's really Penelope. Ah, the weaver. But they call me Penny for short. A rose by any name at all would still be a rose. Oh, won't you come in, Mr. Davy Jones? Oh, just call me Davy Penny. A man that doesn't wear shoes is never known as Mr. Go there for Davy? Mm hmm Why do you wear those whiskers? Oh, I think they make me look sort of distinguished. Well, a lot of famous men have worn whiskers. It's uh, Abe Lincoln, General Grant, the Smith Brothers. Is it because you're a beachcomber? Oh, that's what the lady in the store said that you are. Oh, uh, this is ugly. Yeah, I guess she would. Davy, what does a beachcomber do? Oh. Beachcomber does all sorts of things that other people never get a chance to do. Like what? Oh, explore caves, collect uh, shells, dig clams, repair faucets, tell salty stories, sing salty chanties. What's a salty chanty? Well, um, 
I'm a deep water sailor just in from Hong Kong. Hand me a drink, I will sing you a song. Come on, try it with me. I'm a deep water sailor just in from Hong Kong. Hand me a drink, I will sing. Of course, I'm only guessing, but are you Davy Jones? Yes, ma'am. I'm Ms. Wilson. How do you do, Ms. Wilson? Mother Davy's a real beachcomber. Well, beachcomber, jack of all trades. Uh, mender of things, collector of curios, uh, plumber of sorts. My goodness, all that. And off-key singer of chanties. <laughs> yeah. I guess that should hold it for a while. Thank you, Mr. Jones. He wants to be called Just Plain Davy. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Just Plain Davy. It was a pleasure. Well, goodbye. Would you like to stay and have a cup of coffee with us? Well, thank you. I think I would. Good. Sit down here. Golly, I think going barefoot is fun. Don't you ever wear shoes? Oh, shoes, Penny, are the emblem of middle-class morality, to which no self-respecting beachcomber ever subscribes. Miss Wilson. Hello. Say, if you're going to be Davy to me, perhaps I should be Janet to you. Fair enough. Busman's holiday? Yeah. Just looking for subject matter. You doing anything important right now? Resting. Mind if I paint you? Not if it doesn't disturb my resting. You always rest polishing wood? I usually only rest. Thought if I smoothed it down a little, someone might buy it. Oh, I don't know why. Too big for a paperweight. No, I guess it has no real value. Well, maybe you could make it valuable. You ought to be able to make something useful out of it. Production for use. Everything put to maximum production. And everybody. Including beachcombers? Well, beachcombers have their responsibilities, too, you know. You see, they make other people feel superior by comparison. Everyone can't be a world beater, you know. My, aren't we the bitter ones? Well, some people in this world of ours have to be nobodies. If everyone was a somebody, then no one would be an anybody. Well, that's Jabba Walk if I ever heard it. I think it's very interesting, it's all gnarled and twisted. It was part of the root. Probably torn from its home by some storm. Just some violent personal tragedy all its own. Then cast adrift on the sea, battered by the waves. Then cast upon the beach to dry and bleach in the sun. No one wants it. Completely useless. Possibly not. I think something good, something useful could be done with it. You said that before. Like what, for instance? Well, I, I think it'd make a very nice lamp. Very picturesque and interesting. Think so? Yes, of course, you'd have to level off that end down there so it could stand upright, and then you drill a hole down the length of it for the light cord. Rig up some lights at the top for the shade. I could give you the address of some people in the city be glad to sell those for you. Think so? Well, sure, if you sold one, you'd want to sell more. You know, you could work up a nice business for yourself selling driftwood land. What are you trying to do? Make me respectable? Well, I guess I've never gotten over my Girl Scout training. Light acid solution and... Uh... Cut off the grime, bring out the lines of the grain, blue wax, luster. Just be a minute, dear. That'll be two dollars and seventy-four cents, Miss Wilson. Morning. Morning. You want something? Uh, just a pack of cigarettes, please. Oh. Good morning, Janet. Oh, hi, Davy. Here are your clams, Mrs. Ebner. Right. Well, hello, Dave. Oh, hello, Jim. 
Well, it's certainly a surprise running into you like this. What are you doing down here? Why, well, I live here now. Oh? We were wondering where you went, what happened to you. Mm. Well, it's nice seeing you again. I beg your pardon, but do you know Davy? Yes, as, as a matter of fact, I used to work for him. You worked for him? Well, a few years ago, Dave was one of the bright young men in the advertising business. Had a great future ahead of him. Then something happened. Please believe me, this, this isn't idle curiosity. But would you tell me about it? His wife left on a trip to visit with her family. Coming home on the train, there was a wreck. His wife was killed. Davy Jones has taken me and Willie clam digging. Oh, Penny, now look. Don't you think maybe you and the children are becoming a nuisance to Davy? Oh, no. He likes kids. Now, how do you know he does? Oh, kids can tell. But you're spending your entire vacation with Davy. There's something going on every day. Look, dear. I don't want you to become too fond of Davy. It's not a good idea to like a person too much when maybe you won't be able to see them again. Not see Davy again. Why not, Mother? Well, darling, he lives here, and we live in the city a hundred miles away. But a hundred miles isn't so far. We came here on the train in three hours. Yes, on the train. Well, even if Davy can't come see us this winter, we'll come back next summer, won't we? Well, I'm not so sure. But, Mother! <laughs> well, we'll see, but I'm not making any promises. Golly, Davy's real handsome without his whiskers. Yes, he is rather handsome, isn't he? I never noticed it before. I bet if Davy would cut his whiskers off and wear shoes, you'd like him a lot better, wouldn't you? Oh, I like Davy all right, dear. You do? Oh, yes, as a friend, he's very interesting. He's... Oh, we... <laughs> Well, all right, Penny, go on, run along. Go on, run along. Okay, bye, Mom. Have fun. There he is! Hi, Daddy! We're here. Are you sick? Me? Oh, not a bit. Only people that live in air-conditioned homes and eat regularly get sick. What, you cooking that bouillon stuff again? Sure smells super. Okay, freeloaders, I get the idea. Come on, pass the cups, Willie. <laughs> Yeah, take the spoon. Oh my God, it's hot. Just sip it. Hi, Davy. Davy, just why are you a beachcomber? No character, Penny. I guess it's, uh, well, some people would say I'm a coward. No, you ain't, Davy. I remember last summer when you ran out past the breakers and rescued that man from drowning. Well, we have two kinds of courage. Physical and mental. Well, you wish Grandma could cook like that. You sure'd make some woman a good cook and husband, Davy. He sure would. Yeah, some girl's passing up a real bargain in me. Now, come on, drink up, clam diggers. Let's get after those elusive clams before the tide starts coming in. Oh, <gasps> Mother, seven clams for our dinner. Aren't they nice? Oh. Yes, they're, they're just lovely, dear. Davy gave me this recipe for clam fritters. He says they're best that way. Davy sure is a good cook. I'm sure he is, dear. Mother, why don't we invite Davy over for dinner sometime? I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't want to. But he said he would. Oh, you've already asked him, huh? For Sunday. I knew you wouldn't mind. Wouldn't make much difference if I did, would it? Well, I only thought that if you got to know Davy real well, that you might get to like him better. I like Davy, dear. Not much you don't. All right, Penny. I'd be very happy to have Davy come for dinner on Sunday. And I'll try to like him almost as much as you do. <laughs> Mother! Hi, 
Hi, Davy. Hi, Janet. Well, are you almost finished? Mm-hmm. Still think it'll sell? Well, I think it's a wonderful piece of workmanship. You, uh, were going to give me the address of a shop you thought might be able to sell them for me. Here you are. Just thought I'd let you remind me of it. Didn't want you to think I was pushing you into some unpleasant situation. Such as the uh, cloak of respectability? <laughs> Such as? Is that the portrait of the bearded zombie of the beach? Almost. You uh, left off the foliage. Why? Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe it had more... Um, something or other this way. More character? You said it. I didn't. Tell me, what do you have against beards? Absolutely nothing. When a beard isn't a symbol of defeat. So that's your interpretation. Or self-pity. Got it all figured out, haven't you? What are you, a social service worker or something? You play Lady Bountiful to the morale of every piece of human flotsam you meet? You're staying right in character, Mr. Jones. That self-deprecatory tone, that bitterness toward the world. Why don't you admit it's you you feel sorry for and nobody else alive or dead? Look, you don't seem to understand that there are certain things... Would it interest you to know that tragedy has touched others as well as yourself? My husband was killed in Korea. It just so happens I was very much in love with him. But I couldn't follow your pattern of behavior under any circumstances. Janet! I'm sorry. Really sorry. Could you forget what I just said? Oh, you must think I'm a terrible person. No, not too terrible. They say a man who loves children and animals isn't all bad. And the invitation to Sunday dinner. Still on? Yeah. We'll expect you around three. I'll be there. Bells on. Hello, Davy. Good afternoon, Penny. Dinner's almost ready. After you. Oh. <sighs> then, <clears throat> after five years in the ocean, the salmon comes back to that very same river. And from the river into the very same stream, then possibly on up into a smaller stream, way up into its headwaters. And there, in the very same spot that she was born, the salmon lays its eggs. But how does the salmon find its way back? Well, that's one of the mysteries of the salmon's life that, that only the salmon can answer, and she isn't telling. Gee, Davy, that was a super story. Even better than the one about the Goonie bird. Excuse me, please. Where are you going? To, to find Willie. He promised to show me his collection of butterflies. All right? All right. See you later, Penny. Would you like some more coffee? How can I resist coffee as good as this? <laughs> See what I mean? Absolutely no character. You have an astounding fund of knowledge, Davy. Penny's absolutely fascinated with your tales. Oh, I'm a regular encyclopedia of unimportant facts and minor trivia. I just hate to go home. Hand me those things, will you, dear? Mother, Will I ever have a father? Now, Penny. Everybody should have a father. Willie said so. Yes, I know. I, I've thought about it a little. Well, then why don't we get me one? Dear, you just don't go around hunting for a father for you and a husband for me. Those things have to happen. Maybe I could make something like that just happen. You're thinking of Davy, aren't you? 
Davy make a wonderful father for me and a husband for you. If you only liked him just half as much as me. Penny, I'll let you in on a little secret. Maybe I like Davy better than you think I do. You do? And maybe without too much trouble, I could learn to love Davy. But darling, even if you and I both love him, that doesn't necessarily mean... Well, what I mean is that there are other things to consider, important things. You see, a husband and a father must be responsible. And... Oh, besides, Davy hasn't shown he's interested in us, only in a casual, friendly way. But he is. I know he is. But he hasn't shown it. And, dear, he has no ambition whatsoever. Yes, he has. He rented the empty shop next to the store. And all morning long, he's been putting in machinery and tools and things. And Davy's going into the lamp business. The lamp business? Mm-hmm. And Davy told me he had something very important to talk to you about, that he'd come here to the cottage before we leave. Here to the cottage? Penny, I want you to go and find Davy, and I, I want you to tell him that I won't see him here at the cottage, that our train leaves at 4.15, and I'll see him there at the station, and no other place. But, Mother, suppose he won't come there. Mrs. Hubner said he wouldn't go near the station because he was afraid of trains or something, remember? Yes, I remember. Tell him if he wants to see us, it's at the station. Only at the station. Yes, Mother. Mother, I told him what time the train left. Well, maybe something happened and he couldn't get away. Come on, dear. Oh, excuse me. Mother, just look at him. I'm sorry I didn't get here sooner, but I had to wrap the going away present and press my suit. Davey, you look simply wonderful without that old beard and dressed up and all. I didn't think this is sharp. You should see me in my blue number. Guess what? The lamp. Mm -hmm. oh. Penny, will you put it on a car for your mother? But don't drop it. It's kind of heavy. Will you ride often? You bet I will. Every day. Well, we'll have to go now. Well, when will I see you again? We're coming back next summer. Oh, yes, of course, but we, we could come back for the Christmas holidays. I've often wondered what the ocean looked like in the winter. But before then, Christmas is a long time off. I could come to the city to see you. Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. I'll expect you then, Davy. So will I. Goodbye, Davy. Goodbye, Penny. Aren't you going to kiss Mother goodbye? Oh, of course. Goodbye, Janet. Goodbye, baby. Oh, Mother, the train's going to go. Oh, come on. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye, Janet. Goodbye. 